I'm very fortunate that I became close enough to the family to where I actually met Ray's mother when she came out from Pennsylvania. Uh, Ray's mother never called him Ray. She always called him Dennis or Denny, uh, because Ray's dad's name was Ray, so, <laughs> and there was a divorce. So I, I friction. Um, Ray, uh, well, I after I met Ray, Ray was had just gotten divorced from Carolyn Brandt, who had starred in The Incredibly Strange Creatures, who became mixed up zombies, and so on and so forth in Ray's film. I, he met her interviewing. And Ray was unbelievable interviewing girls. I've, that guy should have been a psychiatrist. I've seen him set with an actress or an actor and get everything about him out of their whole life. And then when he wants to shoot a scene, get them to put that bad experience in their life into that scene or into that audition. Uh, Ray opened up an acting school. And he said, he called me up and he said, we're going to open up an acting school. I said, what am I going to do? He says, well, you're going to teach acting. I says, really? He says, yeah. And we did. Uh, and at this same time, Ray had just uh, completed um, his third or fourth year at UNLV as the film professor there and was no longer uh, in that position. There had been a power play over there and someone had uh, said some things to get him removed which was totally ridiculous. Same period of time as when Ray met Catherine, and I was fortunate enough to go to the wedding and be at the wedding and, you know, be part of it. Family man, unbelievable. Protective, very father protected of his family. A great family man. Ray was a cook. That guy could cook so much better than his wives, it was unbelievable. <laughs> and. I remember one time I was doing a transition from some, some work projects and Ray just had me stay at his home whenever I was in town. You know, gave me a room, you know, car blanche. He'd give you, get Ray do anything for you if you were his friend. When we shot a lot of time on the film, it was always short ends because he could get them cheaper. And then uh, back then when we shot on the 16 millimeter, we had to take everything to quality sound in Hollywood or mail it and same thing, or pick it up, or mail, have it mailed back for dailies, because dailies aren't like they are today. And being in Las Vegas and shooting on short ends, how he would remember everything, not, not even a script note, it is amazing. So, I mean, uh, and then as far as, as, a, as a filmmaker, well, Ray trained the guy that won the Academy Award for Close Encounters of the Third Kind. When Ray died of a heart attack, and, and we knew he had a weak heart, but I, I really didn't, you know, think it was as close as it was. Uh, Ray was, the door was being knocked on. Hollywood is a calling. They were looking for some of these old grindhouse guys, and he was about to have his second career when we lost him. And on another note, uh, good publicity, bad publicity, all is good. Ray won the Golden Turkey Award, which I don't know, a lot of you might not know what that is, but it's the worst film of the year. Hey, he made a film and he won an award. What can I say? What was the name of the film? I, I don't even remember. But he made films like Rat Fink and Boo Boo. The Lemon Grove Kids, which pissed off Hans Hall, was, uh, uh, who was a, whose father was the original Bowery Boy. Well, then later, they became friends. As usual, once you met Ray, you, there was no grudge held. You were going to be friends. He was just that kind of guy. The thing with Ray is he never got the opportunity to work with real money. Uh, he was a grindhouse guy in Hollywood. He made the incredibly strange creatures that became mixed up zombies, which was the first monster musical. They also give him credit for inventing that swirly thing on film. He was the first guy to do that. And he's just a kid. And uh, at the same time, he went by the name Cash Flag, where he starred in that same film we talked about. He's worked under different pseudonyms like Wolfgang and you know, you name it, he might just make it up right off the cuff. But it would all come together in the end. So the thing with Ray is he never got the opportunity to work with real money. Don't, 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 don't.
I'm fortunate to have gotten to know him and to work with him and learn from him. Uh, he used to tell everyone that, because uh, I was an air conditioning contractor back then, and he, his big story was, well, Ron came out to fix my air conditioner, and uh, I decided he should be an actor. And that's how I discovered him, and that was his story. Uh, so when they interviewed me in, uh, for the show, for the Jonathan Ross show in London, England, uh, I gave that story uh, on, on TV <laughs> to substantiate Ray's uh, idea. <laughs> Hollywood, the land of the stars. Joe's ambition is to be one, a star. A star of motion pictures. That world of make-believe. So far, Joe has had very little success. For that road to stardom can be a long and hard grind. Unfortunately, Joe has refused to accept the world of reality and has found himself trapped amongst the monthly payment plans. He's got a new house, a new car, a new TV set, swimming pool. Very impressive to the people here in Hollywood. But unless the monthly payments are kept up, there won't be any TV sets or swimming pools.